Good morning again. Uh, we're here at Elmira Baptist Church's building today and just uh, testing out the mic for Sunday. I'll have some announcements about that in a minute. But let me start with a basic question. What do you get when you squeeze a sponge? Well, the short answer is whatever you put into it. If you put the sponge in water and you pull it out and squeeze it, you're going to get water. If you put it in vinegar and you pull it out and squeeze it, you're going to get vinegar. And I think our lives are much like that. This time of life, they're under a lot of pressure and we're being squeezed extra. What do you notice is coming out? Is it the Word of God? Is it the joy of the Lord? Is it that peace that passes all understanding? If it's not, the, the problem isn't with God. The problem isn't with your circumstances. Uh, the problem is with what you're putting into your life. You can't blame the sponge if you squeeze it and vinegar comes out. Uh, it's, it's what you put the sponge into. So let me encourage you. I, some of you are more busy than normal, and I understand that. Some of us have a little more time than normal. Use this time wisely to put in God's Word, put in prayer, put in that waiting upon the Lord. Because the Bible promises those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Well, that's not the lesson for this morning. Let me give you a, a quote this morning. To laugh, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child or a garden patch or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Not Bible advice, but that's uh, from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Well, this is your daily update for Elmira Baptist Church, Thursday, April 30th, 2020. And do you know what that means? Well, it's the last day of April. And uh, for us here in California, that means we've spent the entire month of April under stay-at-home orders. Uh, I've never experienced anything in, in my lifetime and we keep telling our children to take a journal or take some, keep a journal, take some notes because they'll be telling their grandchildren, I think, about this time, unless the Lord comes back, which I'll be excited to have happen. But uh, this is the last day of April. We've made it under the, the whole month of April under this quarantine and the Lord's going to give us strength for the days to come as well. I want to just take a minute and say, I'm sorry, I apologize. I've not been reading the comments that you all are leaving under these daily updates, under the sermons, and I need to do that. So going forward, I plan to, to, to take a look at those comments. I know sometimes you're just communicating with, with each other. We saw AJ uh, this last weekend, and one of you said, hey, good to see you, AJ. That's fantastic. Keep that up. But I'll try to keep a little bit better track of what you're saying to each other in those notes as well. Now remember this week, uh, my encouragement to you, just to keep us all connected and, and continue to receive your input, my, my question this week was for you to think of your favorite Bible character. We're going to just set Jesus in his own category because he was God and man. Uh, other than Jesus, think about your favorite Bible character and what he or she might have done to respond to a crisis like this. I've received one already and you don't have to give it by, by a video, but I, I would encourage you, if you have time, to take 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, record a video. My favorite uh, Bible character is, and I think he or I think she would have responded to this crisis in this way. That would be a blessing to all of us. I'll stitch those together like I did with the testimonies and post those on Sunday, Lord willing. You can email those to me. You can text those to me. Uh, if you take a little video, just attach your video to a text or an email and send those to me, hopefully by tomorrow evening so that I can get those together on Saturday. And again, don't forget, fathers, Mother's Day is coming up. And especially if you have young children, well, even teenage children, they may not remember that Mother's Day is coming up. You may need to remind them, give them some ideas on what they can do to honor their mother, maybe even do some organization a lot of times that happens at, at a Sunday school service. You bring your kids in for Sunday school and the teacher puts together a little craft. And I, I thought about that, but it's just so hard to get people together, get things distributed. So let me encourage you fathers, you take that on yourself this year. How can I honor my wife and show my children how to honor and respect their parents um, 
on this, on this Mother's Day. Now, I mentioned a verse for meditation this week was Colossians 2, 7, rooted and, and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught. I hope you're taking some time to meditate on that, which brings us to our announcements for our Sunday service. We're going to go ahead and meet as we did this last week at 11 o'clock. Uh, this morning, WT was helping me. We did some extra preparation for this coming for this coming Sunday, and we think we'll be better prepared. So we're going to start our, our main service at 11 o'clock. We're still going to start our Sunday school hour, 945, have that Sunday school teaching at 945, have the um, main service, the worship service at 11 o'clock, and we will attempt to stream it to two different locations this uh, Sunday, see if that helps. Uh, one will be the Facebook Live page. Those of you that are on Facebook, that's, that's great. If you want to skip over to Sermon Audio, check out their live stream uh, option. You should be able to find us there under Elmira Baptist Church. And last week when I was uh, checking that, that was in alphabetical order. So I'm glad our name doesn't begin with a Y or a Z. But uh, look down through there and find Elmira Baptist Church and you can follow along that way. So we'll start at 945 with Sunday School. That will be in two places, uh, Sermon Audio and uh, Facebook Live. We'll do an 11 o'clock service, again, two places. And we'll also have a backup is our plan so that if it does go down, it should not take as long for it to come back up as it did this previous week. So if you... Uh, Notice all of a sudden, boom, we're gone. Uh, just wait two, three minutes, five minutes, and you should see that live stream come right back up. Um, so that's what we're going to do this coming Sunday. Uh, if we have trouble like we did this past Sunday, we may have to change our, our strategy. But for right now, 9.45, 11 o'clock, look for us on Facebook Live. If you, want to, if you want an adventure, head over to Sermon Audio, see if you can find us there instead. Just prayer requests. Uh, I, I know you're praying for one another. Pray for a friend of Roy's. He's been witnessing to Dave. And I hope you're taking opportunities to be a witness during this time. Yes, we're not seeing nearly as many people as, as we have in the past. And, and, and our social distancing guidelines make it more challenging. But that doesn't mean that the fields are not white to harvest. So lift up your eyes. See those opportunities. Pray for Dave and uh, for the word to go out even at this time. And then pray for long-suffering. Pray for patience. Take your Bibles. Turn with me to Colossians <clears throat> chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10 says, That ye might walk worthy of the Lord, and do all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness what does it mean to walk worthy of the lord well one obvious example is to walk in such a way that you glorify god just like maybe your mom or your dad used to say to you i know my parents said to me hey you're a dean you should act like it and yes we're a christian we ought to act like it but these verses also reveal that to walk worthy of the Lord means to live our lives in such a way that others can readily identify God's power, God's work, a knowledge of God in our lives. Walk worthy of the Lord, it says, unto all pleasing, pleasing God, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So here we are living our lives. Yes, change. Very different lives for many of us. But God still wants us to be fruitful. He still wants us to increase in the knowledge of God. He still wants us to be strengthened with might by His power, according to His glorious power. Can people see that in your life, that you're being strengthened? He wants us to develop patience and long-suffering. Now, those two words are very near synonyms, and I don't want to make a huge distinction between them. But often in your New Testament, the word that is translated patience comes from the Greek word hupomeno, and it means to remain under. And it talks about enduring circumstances, enduring circumstances. On the other hand, long suffering comes from a different Greek word and often talks about enduring people. 
One, enduring circumstances, the things that happen to you. And the other, long-suffering, enduring people, the people that are around you. And if you have been quarantined now or staying at home with your family for weeks on end, you may need that long-suffering. Someone noticed one time I was in a meeting with a group of Christians. We were discussing some difficult topics. And he noticed that every time before I spoke, I'd go and take a deep breath. That's what long-suffering is. Long-suffering isn't just attacking people, just throwing your ideas out there. It's taking that deep breath, allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you, to yield to the Spirit so that you respond to people the way that Jesus responded to people. You see, again, just like that sponge is whatever comes out when it's under pressure is what you put into it, you can put the grace of God into your heart and into your life. You can live by the power, the glorious power of God, and you can be strengthened, even in times of drought. You can be patient, even in times of suffering. And you can be long-suffering, even when you're living with irritating people. And then it finally says, with joyfulness. Every Christian's life, every Christian filled with the Spirit, should be marked by joyfulness. It, it, should just, it, it should be obvious in our attitude towards things. When someone says, oh, I forgot to get eggs when I went to the store. There should be that spirit of joyfulness. Um, years ago, I took a trip to Siberia, of all places, through Magadan into Petropavlovsk. You probably don't even know where those places are. But I was supposed to bring some vitamins for the missionary family that was there and it's a long story but the vitamins got left behind in Anchorage, Alaska and I arrived at the airport I, I, I knew I knew I knew that the missionaries were going to be deeply disappointed that I didn't bring their vitamins and I got off the plane and I thought you know the best way to handle this is just right off the bat so I'd never met this missionary before in person he was hosting me he's a young man said, hey, good to meet you. Here I am. I just need to let you know I was not able to bring the vitamins. And you know what? He had a joy about him. If I remember right, his exact words were, oh, well, and we went on with the conversation. He was not going to let his circumstances rob him of his joy. And these circumstances are not easy for many of us. There's extra pressure during this time. But when we walk worthy of the Lord, we reveal to other people that we have an inner joy that comes from being yielded to the Spirit, from being filled with the Spirit, from utilizing that grace that God is continually pouring into our lives. And just like that sponge, if you squeeze a sponge, water comes out if you put it in water. When you squeeze a Christian, God's grace can come out if you've been allowing your your whole being to just be saturated and soaked with God's grace, with God's word, with God's presence. I hope that that's what you're finding at this time. And if you're not, it's not too late. Because remember, the God of all grace, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strength, and settle you. It is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. It's not too late to start today, to spend time in God's word, to meditate on its meaning to you, to enjoy the presence of God in prayer, speaking to Him, listening to Him, and then when the pressures of life squeeze you, God's grace will come out. God is still in control, and we'll meet again tomorrow.